Hello, thanks for joining us for the best practices of the intelligence warfighting function at the Joint Readiness Training Center. This is our virtual JRTC with the cog called Bringing the Crucible to Your Couch. So here I am on my couch in my house sharing it with you with my fancy COVID-19 inspired haircut and social distancing from everybody. I'm Colonel John Ives, the Senior Intelligence Officer, Senior Intelligence Observer, Coach, and Trainer. Uh, like I said, we'll be talking about the best practices of the intelligence warfighting function. I have eight of them that we normally brief in a one-pager. Even if I emailed you this briefing, it would still just be this one page. Notice how the first bullet has a lot of good information in it. We'll be spending a lot of time on that one. This is the first of a few relatively bite-sized videos where we'll be talking about each of these bullets in turn. The first one's quite a doozy, though, so we'll be breaking that into probably three different parts, starting with the four core competencies. So let's ask this question. Why am I harping on the four core competencies, specifically intelligence synchronization, intelligence operations, intelligence ped, and intelligence analysis? These things are important because if you don't understand the core competencies, if you haven't actually read ADP 2-0, which by the way is only about 80 pages long, especially if you include the uh, table of contents and the pictures that are prevalent throughout the entire uh, manual, take a look at it. Download it off of Google and take a look at it. This is important to understanding not only what it is you do as an S2, but what you do as an intelligence professional. The first core competency is intelligence synchronization. Intelligence synchronization is a lot more than just synchronizing collection. A lot of units come in here and try to synchronize just the collection piece, or they try to synchronize just a couple of meetings that happen at 0500 in the morning to do some sort of an intel update with each other. But that's only part of it. Obviously, synchronizing collection is important. Obviously, synchronizing the team, bringing everybody together to do that morning report or afternoon laydown of what the enemy is doing and what everybody thinks it is, by the way, that's creating a common intelligence picture, so please do that as well. But this is also about synchronizing when does the S2 get that last bit of real information to support the commander's decision point. This is about synchronizing when the battalion S2 for a logistics battalion is going to get that last bit of crucial information on the route to the fuelers before they reach that last turnaround point. This is about understanding where data at rest and where data at motion is going to be reaching everybody. That would be knowledge management and the intelligence architecture. It's about knowing the pace plan. And again, it's about when are we all going to get together and talk about this? So when does the BCT actually share all of the IPB products to include battle damage assessment products, the BDA chart? And when does the battalion S2 ever provide some sort of bottom-up refinement to that one? That's all intelligence synchronization. This is the art of integration. This is the art of making intel useful in time and space. This brings us to intelligence operations. Some would say that that's a fancy word for information collection, which it is, but collection is one of the tougher things that people will try to accomplish here at JRTC, so let's cover that in a completely different topic. I'll just say this. The information collection plan, or the ICSM, is some sort of a litmus test for the success or the struggles of the intelligence warfighting function because it requires the understanding of PED, because it requires the understanding of all of the assets, because it requires not just an in-depth knowledge of the enemy situation and the enemy actions based on IPB, but also what is the friendly situation and how are we going to be able to support that with all of our collection. Third is good old-fashioned PED. Let me tell you, it breaks my heart to hear somebody say something about PED only being for echelons above brigade, or PED only supports flying objects. Uh, that is absolutely ridiculous, because I would argue that you must consider PED even when you're talking about that 19-year-old scout who's sitting in the rain in the middle of a sumac bush. Now's probably a good point to also point out that uh, JRTC is a pit of despair when it comes to all these different plant-based things. Uh, poison ivy, poison oak, and poison sumac are all prevalent here at JRTC. At one point or another, we'll find you trying to camouflage something and or sleeping right in the middle of it. So here's a quick shout out to terrain analysis and understanding your area of operations. As to that's kind of your job also. But anyway, let's get back to that 19 Delta who's sitting in the rain. What's your PED plan for that information? How is that soldier reporting that information up through the battalion? Does it go all the way to the BCT? 
At what point do you decide that that information is of value for answering a PIR? Or does it just confirm or deny an enemy course of action? Even negative reporting is important if it comes back and says the enemy's not in an NAI that you expected to see the enemy. What about the shadow? What about the human pet? And do you understand the timeline for getting all that information through the system? Or is that really just intelligence synchronization? Or is it the responsibility of intelligence operation? Wait, you mean to tell me that so far we have three of the four core competencies and they probably are all linked in some sort of nifty, cool Venn diagram? Hey, look at that. And that brings us to our fourth core competency and that of analysis. Some would tell you that analysis is the bread and butter of intelligence, but I'll tell you that analysis is probably just the byproduct of us doing our job the right way at the right time. But I'll also warn you that analysis at JRTC is sometimes pretty bad, and that's usually based on the fact that they haven't completed IPB, or they haven't even tried to do all of IPB. Missing event temps, not even getting to the event matrix, but that's another topic for another time. Now, when it comes to analysis, do I care if you thought four tanks were going to be coming down the road and only two of them actually showed up? Absolutely not. The fact that you identified that there was tanks, the fact that you said they'd be coming down the road at a certain time towards your friendly positions is good enough. You warned the unit. You got them prepared to destroy tanks. They just didn't get to destroy four. They got to destroy two. So good job, S2. But what a disaster it is. If the BCTS2 thought that and didn't provide that analysis to the battalion? Or what if the battalion looked at that analysis and didn't think it was right and didn't provide bottom-up refinement back up to the BCTS2? Again, that Venn diagram of how all of these are linked. And how heartbreaking is it to find out that you didn't actually critically think your way through it or didn't do the analysis on the terrain? Terrain analysis, that IPV thing again. And then you had the enemy going down the wrong road or you had them going down a road that had no crossing point. So where's the terrain analysis in that one? It's also terrible to see an S2 who gets so locked into a course of action that they don't have any ability to recognize that this is a separate course of action or just a variant of the one they're actually following simply because a couple of extra vehicles, a couple fewer vehicles, or they showed up two hours early. We actually Okay, to sum up this bite-sized episode, for any S2, whether you're battalion or a BCT S2, is that there are four core competencies, synchronization, operations, PED, and analysis. And if you follow these, if you internalize these, if you truly think your way through them, you can't lose at JRTC. Join us next time when we'll get through the rest of this bullet of the best practices of the intelligence warfighting function and the other best practices that you'll need to take a look at. So be safe, be smart and wash your hands.